Hi, this is Rabbi Chaim Kaufman. I've been working with converts to Judaism for the last 10 years, so I thought to make a video about uh, what to expect in the conversion process and some of the potential pitfalls that you might actually fall in while in this process. So the first thing I wanted to mention is about finding a mentor and a community, right? Finding someone to teach you and, and what it takes and maybe some of the problems of getting into a community. So the first thing is you made the decision that uh, you want to convert to Judaism. Now the question is, how do you go about it? So the first thing you need to do is find someone who's willing to teach you. Now, now finding somebody to teach you is going to depend, A, on location, and B, you know, what exactly that you're looking for. Because the reality is, in order to convert, you don't necessarily have to be in the same location as the person who's teaching you. You can do it online. Hence, I give these classes online, right, via WebEx, which is an easy uh, download, or you can you can call in. But, you know, some people don't like to learn, um, you know, distance learning. They'd rather learn with somebody, you know, in the community or, you know, someone they, they you know, it's tangible. They're like in front of them, not necessarily in front of a, uh, in front of a screen so to speak. So finding a mentor uh, is certainly not an easy thing. Um, and again, it doesn't have to be somebody necessarily in the same, uh, you know, in the same community to to teach you. You know, you're going to need to find a rabbi in that community to be a sponsoring rabbi because you really need two things. You need someone to teach you and you need somebody to vouch for you. Someone to vouch for you means that they live in the community and they can say that they, you, that you keep kosher, you keep Shabbos, uh, you know, you come to synagogue for all the holidays, right? So that's what we call a um, sponsoring rabbi. So maybe we'll speak a little bit about that as well, about how to, how to find um, such a person. Now, a sponsoring rabbi doesn't necessarily mean he's going to teach you. And one of the one of the things you're going to find is that not so many people want to work with converts. Maybe some not so many people are qualified um, to work with converts. But basically, what a convert has to know. Um, you know, they want to find somebody that, you know, they feel comfortable who's going to teach them. Now, again, it can be, it can be with someone online. You know, it can also be somebody, you know, in person. Now, again, that'll depend on, you know, on the dynamics. So the first thing is, you know, once you're in this process to convert and you decide this is where I want, uh, you know, what you want, then, you know, it might be better. You know, if a person wants to learn with somebody in the community, try and find someone in that community where, uh, where you want to live. Now, we'll speak about finding a community um, as well. I mean, all these things really go hand in hand. So let's say you're in a community. Now, there are different types um, of Jews, right? There are Ashkenazi Jews, or we call Ashkenazic or Sephardic, right? Sephardic Jews, uh, Hasidic Jews. There are modern Orthodox Jews slash, let's say, religious Zionists, right? They, you know, believe very strongly for the state of Israel and, and align themselves um, with that. So the first thing a person has to do when searching out a community, or at least a synagogue, um, in a community, that is going to be where you, where you feel you're aligning yourself with. Now that's something, you know, you have to think about. You have to think, you know, you have to understand what the different movements um, are about. And again, we're not, you know, one of the pitfalls that you don't want to fall into is going either the reform conservative or uh, reconstructionist route. Because if you want, you know, if you want a conversion, you want to be recognized by everybody. So, you know, a reform conversion or a conservative conversion is certainly only recognized, you know, themselves. Reform doesn't recognize conservative, conservative not reform, you know, etc. A person that orthodox conversion should be accepted by everybody. Right, reform and conservative may disagree philosophically, but they, you know, it, it should definitely be legit. The other way around, um, it's not going to be. So there's 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 an issue. There's that there's a definite issue um, with that. That's something you have to keep in mind, and you have to do research. Right, you have to look into what the movements stand for, and where you feel most comfortable. Now, you know, you can read up. There, you know, there are books to read about the different movements etc. But the, mo the most important thing is where a person feels comfortable. Now, you may not feel totally comfortable unless you actually go see the community, you know, until you meet people. If you don't live in the community, let's see, you live far away and the nearest community is like, you know, 150 miles, that's going to be an issue, 
right? You're going to have to like go there, you know, for Shabbos during the week, something, you know, to meet people in order to see like what, you know, what the what the community is like or what people are like, you have to make phone calls, um, etc. So, um, so finding a community is, is certainly not an easy thing, especially, you know, especially if you don't live, you know, near one, if the, I, you know, again, you might have, you're going to have to move at some point. That's an, that's, that's going to be imperative in the conversion process that the, the based in, and we'll speak about the based in process, the rabbinic court process. But the, the important thing here is that at some point, while you're in the process, you're going to have to move to a Jewish community. And the, the reason is, is because if you want to know what it means to be a Jew, you have to live among Jews. You can't live by yourself. Learning with somebody online or even in person is not the same as seeing it up front. Right? You're getting book knowledge. Book knowledge is definitely important. Right? You have to know what to do. Seeing it is even more important. Right? That's why I have to, you know, at some point... You know, you're going to have to be in a community and you have to, you know, meet people, get invited for Shabbos or a festival or whatever and see how it all comes together. So, so community wise, again, yeah, you know, it may depend on, uh, you know, children, you know, that in a community has to be, there has to be schools there if you have kids. Um, also, if you're in a community, there can't be just one synagogue, right? One Orthodox synagogue. Let's say, you know, there's, um, there's a Chabad house, you know, in that area, but there's nothing else. Now, Chabad are, um, you know, they're Orthodox Jews. They do, they do Jewish outreach. They don't necessarily work with converts. Some, you know, some do. But if there's only one Orthodox synagogue and that is them, then, then a based in, a rabbinical court may have issue because, of the, because if they go out of business, then you're stuck, right? Then what are you supposed to do? You have no, you know, you have no Jewish community. So you have to be in a place what we, you know, what I would call a thriving Jewish community that has more than one Orthodox synagogue and should have a school. If you don't have school age kids, or you know your kids that, or you don't have kids that need school, or whatever the case is, then that might be a moot point. But you certainly want to move into a community that, you know, is a thriving uh, Jewish community. Now it doesn't mean they have, you know, kosher restaurants. That that's irrelevant. It, the important thing is that they have schools and there's more than one. You know, there's more than one, um, there's more than one synagogue. So you move into a community. Again, you have to choose where, you know, you think you fit in the spectrum. Or do you know? You have to do research. You have to look into things, and you know, then you should, you know, try and contact the rabbi of a synagogue, and try and meet people. You know, try and meet people in the community. Also, you want to show, you want to show that you are the real deal. And that you'll do whatever it you know it takes to convert. You may be pushed away once, may be pushed away two times or three times. You know you may not get your your uh, emails answered or whatever. You you know you have to be persistent. This process is all about being persistent. If you know if you're not willing to you know take take the bull by the horse or the horse by the no horse, bill by the horse, you're not you know you're not going to get anywhere. You have to be proactive. So. Um, you know, you also need a sponsoring rabbi. I would not contact a rabbi of a synagogue and say, will you be my sponsoring rabbi? Right? Because they don't know you from a hole in the wall. And how do they know you're serious or not? So they want to make sure that you're, you know, you're the real deal. And obviously showing you're the real deal means, you know, that you're going to move into the community. Right? So when you're ready to move, you know, that's when you should contact, you know, or you should contact somebody before you're ready to move. And see if, you know, if that's for you and say, listen, you know, I am serious and I'm going to show I'm serious because I, I want to move. This is a community I want and I want to hear about the synagogue and, you know, I want help and, you know, etc. Again, they may push you off. They may not help you as much, but do not ask them to be a sponsoring rabbi straight away because they'll, they'll never, they'll never do that until you prove yourself that you are the real deal and you actually want to convert. So the first thing is you have to find a community where, you know, you think you're going to feel comfortable. Then you should start contacting, you know, a rabbi in the community. Tell them, you know, you want to move to the community and, you know, you want to meet other people and you want to get a feel for what the community, you know, is. They, they should have no doubt that this is what you're going to do and, you know, you're going to move. Even if you're not going to move for, you know, however long. 
you know, even if it's like a few months down the road, nonetheless, you have to show that you are 100% serious and that, you know, you say, I'm coming. And if they give you a hard time, you know, etc., you just have to, you know, you just have to be persistent and basically say, it doesn't matter what you say, how much you put me off, I'm coming. I'm going to move to the community and I'm going to do whatever it takes. Right? So then once you move into the community and you develop a connection to the synagogue, right, whatever synagogue it is, then, you know, you have to show that you're serious and hopefully you'll get invited, you'll meet people, you'll get invited for Shabbos, you'll get invited for festivals, you'll be able to see what goes on. But one thing you have to keep in mind is when you move into a community, do not think in any way, shape or form the community is going to open up the red carpet. They're not interested. We're not interested in converts. You know, you could drop dead tomorrow. And if you don't convert, that doesn't matter. Say, wow, that's so honest of you. Say, no, you don't understand. We are not looking for converts. If a person's the real deal, and they believe the Torah is from God, he passed it down to Moshe, he passed it down to the Jewish people, and you do whatever it takes to get to the other side, fine, but you're going to have to keep proving yourself. In, you know, even if you live in a community... You know, if you don't look Jewish, you'll be invited. Let's say you're invited to a Shabbos meal. You know, you know they'll say, "Oh, you know, you don't look Jewish. So what's your story?" You're gonna be put on, you know, show, so to speak. It's it's somewhat unnerving, right? But but many times you probably be asked about conversion, right? Because people are generally interested. They're not doing it to make fun per se, but they, you know they want they want to hear an interesting story. You know, why'd you choose it? You know, etc. You know, you can choose how much detail you want to give or you don't want to give. But, you know, you should, again, you shouldn't think that because you're in this process and, you know, you want to show that you're the real deal, that people are going to roll out the red carpet, right? That, that for sure, that for sure you shouldn't think. You should definitely do your homework about the community. You should try and speak to people, try and meet people. And, you know, you should be up front you know, with the rabbi of the synagogue and say, you know, I want to come and I want to pray here and, you know, I want to convert and I'm serious and I'm moving in. Every step along the way, you're going to have to prove yourself. And hopefully over time, you develop a connection with that rabbi and he would agree in the future because you're showing that you're the real deal that, that he'll agree to sponsor you. Now, at the same time, you got to find someone to teach you. Right, so that we that we spoke about a little bit. So finding teachers also not so easy. You might not find a teacher in the community. You might have to do it, you know, you might have to do it online. You know, not the end of the world. There are programs out there. Um, you know, one that I do, but the, you know, there there are others. Um, you know, there are others out there. But if you're going to choose someone to learn by, you know, they have to have credentials. And having credentials, one of the most important things is if you look at a resume, you want to look at where they learned. Who do they consider their rabbi or their das Torah? In other words, when they cannot answer a question, who do they go to? You know, that, that's important. And the reason that it's important is because that is the difference between someone, I know I keep saying this over and over again, but someone who's the real deal and someone who's a pretender to the throne. Because if you're a pretender to the throne, unfortunately, there's a lot of scams out there. You know, there are quote-unquote rabbis out there that teach people, but A, they're not rabbis. B, you know, they're, they're causing other problems, and a lot of people don't hold of them. So you have to be careful, you know, who you learn by. And again, one important criteria is, who is their rabbi? Do they have references? Right, the people that they've helped or whatever. You know, it, it's important because, you know, a person is going to invest the time. It's going to invest money. You don't want to see your money, you know, get flushed down the toilet because the person's unscrupulous. So before you make any decision, check them out. Right, see where they learned, what they've done. You know, ask others if you have, you know, other people that, you know, that, that uh, may be in the know. You know, you, you can ask them, but it, you know, it, yeah, you have to keep in mind if they, you don't want to be scammed and, um, you know, if it's going to cost you a ton of money, look the other way. It doesn't mean that, you know, a rabbi's time isn't worth money, but you know, there will be people that will say, you know, we'll do it for six, seven, eight thousand $8,000. And I can almost promise you if that's true, that they say that it won't be 
kosher according to you know to anyone. Doesn't mean people shouldn't get paid. You know, but at the same time, you have to, you know, you have to be careful. So your sponsoring rabbi isn't necessarily the one who's going to teach you. He may not be qualified to teach you. Um, he may be very happy not to teach you and have someone else do it, and they'll work hand in hand. He'll watch over them. I mean, he'll watch over you, meaning he'll see that you keep kosher, that you keep Shabbos, you come to synagogue during the holidays, etc., etc. And the other person will give the classes. You know, most rabbis of synagogues have much, you know, they're so busy dealing with Jews, they don't have time to really to deal with non-Jews. So, in that case, they'll be more than happy to work with someone else um, hand in hand. So, that's that's one of the um, that's one of the pitfalls. That's some of the pitfalls um, about community. Also, schools. If you have school age children, now not all schools will take children of that that you know are not Jewish. Um, some will, some won't. So that if you have kids, you want to check that out. Uh, you certainly want to check that out as well, because no point. You know, if you're going to move into a community and the kids can't go to school, you have to make a decision what to do. Because if you go to rabbinical court, which, again, we'll speak about, if you go to a rabbinical court, you know, and the kids want to convert, then they have to be educated properly. You can't send them to public school. You can't homeschool them. Right? They have to be in a place where they're going to grow spiritually. And they're going to learn what it means to be a Jew. It doesn't matter how far behind the learning they are. You know, if, if it's a, if it's an out-of-town place, like not in New York and New Jersey. So, you know, that, that should be all right. They'll be behind, right, in... Um, you know, in Jewish studies, but, you know, they should be able to catch up depending, depending where they are. So that is also an important thing that you have to check out. Again, not every school is going to take, is going to take a child of a convert before, um, before conversion. Again, you know, many will, but you have, that's also something, that's also uh, something to keep in mind. As I'm sure people are aware, if you move into a Jewish community, right, housing is going to be expensive. Housing, you know, if you if you want to if you want to live close to a synagogue within a few blocks or you know three, four, five, six blocks or whatever, not too far away, the price is going to go up. So also, you know, the housing market is going to be, um, you know, it's certainly going to be an issue. Tuition in a school is a big issue. It's like it's like private tuition, and um, you know, it, it's expensive. You know, there are scholarships, etc., but it's it's cost prohibitive. So also something to um, something to keep in mind. And kosher food also, you know, is expensive. Don't forget, you have the holidays, right? You have seven days of Sukkot. You have seven days of Passover. And everything on Passover is double, triple the price because it's Passover. It's the way it is. Um, so, you know, these are factors. You know, plus a job, right? I forgot to mention that. Right, you're going to move to a community. You have to make sure you have a job in that community, or you can transfer it there, you know, that's also going to, you know, also going to play a factor, now it doesn't necessarily mean you have to live in the same place, you can move somewhere else if it's possible, you know, it's something, you know, you have to find a place where you're going to be able to find, you know, proper livelihood, and able, you know, in order to, um, in order to do this, so that is, um, so that's basically the idea of a community, that's the idea of finding, uh, you know, potentially finding a rabbi of a synagogue and even someone to, um, you know, someone to teach you online. Um, now, there's another thing that even if you're in the in the community, right, you're going to have to convert through a basedin, right? A basedin is a rabbinical court, and the basedin is the one that gives their stamp of approval. You know, eventually you get your document to say you're Jewish. Now, a um, someone who's not someone who teaches a convert what it means to be a Jew, and they go through all all the classes. That person is not converting them; they're just teaching them and preparing them for conversion. A basin convinced of three rabbis that will give their stamp of approval on the conversion. In other words, they're the ones responsible. So, basically, when you go to a basin. Uh, when you go to a rabbinical court, they're the ones that call the shots. In other words, they'll they'll test you, see what you know, what you don't know. They'll be in contact with the sponsoring rabbi. They'll be in contact with the rabbi that teaches you. If they feel that you're lacking in knowledge, what you have to brush up on. But at the end of the day, they're the ones that call the shots. 
The most important thing to remember about a base thin is do whatever they tell you. If you start questioning them, you know, again, they don't have to convert you. They're taking tremendous responsibility for what they do. So, you know, openly questioning them and what they do and how they go about things, that's a bad idea. Right? You do what you're told because at the end of the day, you want to convert. They're the ones signing off on it. So you have to do what they want you to do. If they think you need to learn more, you know, about a certain subject, that's what you do. If they say, you know, you have to get your kids into school, you have to do these other things, you know, they're the ones that are in charge. Now, the basin process, even if a person lives in a community, the basin for sure is going to want to see that you lived in the community at least a year. They want to see you go through the cycle of all the holidays. No one will convert you less than a year unless it's, you know, there are certain... You know, out, you know, the certain circumstances, whatever, whatever they may be. The process itself can last, even if you take, let's say you learn by somebody for, let's say, a year and a half, two years, but you only lived in a community for a half a year. You know, the basin's still going to want to see you learn more, you know, live in the community, you know, and then eventually they'll, they'll convert you. You know, for the, for the basin, can't imagine it takes anything less than two years, right? That's minimal. Right, but you should think that it's gonna it's gonna last. You know, it could last even longer than that. If you're in a rush, this isn't for you. Right, there's, not, there's no quick fixes here. Basin wants to ascertain that you know enough about about Judaism. Again, they're not gonna ask you. You know, they'll, they'll ask you certain questions just to see, you know, where your knowledge is and how broad it is. But they're not expecting you to know everything. You're certainly not gonna know everything, and you certainly have to learn before, after you know, conversion anyway. They understand that. But if they feel like you're really lacking in knowledge, you know, then they, they won't convert you until they feel that your knowledge is up to, you know, your knowledge is up to snuff. They're going to want to see that you know how to read Hebrew. Um, they're not going to necessarily ask you to translate per se, but they want to make sure you can read Hebrew and you can follow in the synagogue, right, if they're reading the Torah or in prayer, that they want, they want to make sure that uh, you know you'll be able to follow, and they want to see you have a basic, uh, a basic knowledge, um, you know, of, of Judaism, and you have to be in the community. Right? I would never ever recommend someone contacting a basin before they move to the community. Doesn't doesn't make any sense to, because the basin will say, oh, you know, where do you live? They say, oh, I live in, uh, you know, in Sioux City. They say, oh, that's so nice. Are there any Jews there? They say, no, but a lot of water buffalo. They say, oh, that's great. You know, when you're serious about conversion, call me. Basin won't even look at you. It doesn't, it doesn't even make any sense to contact them. Once you get into a community, people in the community will tell you, first thing you do is contact the Basin. Right? Uh, you know, you can do that. Basin's not going to do that much for you. They'll take your name. You know, they'll, they'll, they'll make you fill out all kinds of paperwork. You know, they may give you some books to read, maybe a syllabus. They're not going to do much more than that. You know, they're going to see, they want to, they want you to be in touch with them. You know, what you're learning, what you're doing, right? If you come, if you, if you go, let's say you move to a community. You've been learning with someone for a while. You move into a community, you continue to learn with that person. Let's say over another six months or whatever. Then you contact the basin. The basin will say, oh, you've been learning? He says, yeah, I've been learning for the last year by this rabbi so-and-so. And let's say they don't know who this rabbi so-and-so is. So... You know, that might negate certain things, but in general, it probably won't because they'll start asking you questions if, even if they don't know who it is. And if they see that you have a, you know, you have knowledge, they'll realize that the rabbi teaching you is probably not a Mickey Mouse rabbi, right? Probably knows what he's doing. But even so, so if you're in the community and then you go to Basin, you come in much stronger. And therefore, therefore, the, the, the process of conversion will take less time. Because you're already in the community, you've already learned for a while, and now you come to the you come to the rabbinical court showing that you have knowledge. So that that's an important, you know, that's an important thing. Regardless, again, people will tell you you should go straight away. You know, you you can do that. I'm not saying not to do it. I'm just saying that you come in stronger if you're in the community for a while, and then you go to Basin, because then then you have you know you have much greater knowledge. You're integrated into the community, 
you know, people know you, you, you come, you come across much stronger. So again, at the end of the day, the basin is the one calling the shots. They're the ones that are going to tell you what to do and how to do it. And your answer is always going to be respective because they're the ones, they're the ones, you know, putting their, their signatures online here. They, you know, they're the ones that are giving you this piece of paper. So they have all the responsibility. So you have to show respect. You, you know, you shouldn't walk in there with a chip on your shoulder thinking, I have this coming to me. Basin owes you nothing. Right? Sounds a little bit harsh. The Jewish people also, we owe you nothing. If you want to persevere and you want to go through this, we're not looking to proselytize. We're not looking for converts. If you want to do it and you want to go through it, realize. It's going to be a long process. It's not going to be overnight. It's going to take a lot of hard work. It's going to take dedication. You know, and you have to be humble. You know, you know, a basin who sees someone come in with a chip on their shoulder, you know, they, they, they can make life a misery for you. And the reason is because they, they want to see that you have good character traits also. Now, another important thing about a rabbinical court is even if you have a rabbinical court where you live, let's say it's not a strong rabbinical court, it doesn't mean you have to go there. You could go to another rabbinical court, even if it's, you know, two states away or across the country. Now, as long as you didn't start the rabbinical court process, if you're in the middle of the rabbinical court process in one place, you don't want to go somewhere else. That's a major red flag. Because the rabbinical courts talk. So they're going to want to know why you left. Right? So, that you know, it's, you know, it's not good. So whoever is teaching you, whoever is guiding you, will give you the proper information of where to go, what's good, what may not be better. I don't want to go into the whole thing about, you know, bad bastins, um, etc. But there are unscrupulous bastins. So someone who is going to teach you has to, you know, be well versed in, you know, in, in, in what they are. And just because you go somewhere else, you know, doesn't mean they won't accept you, right? Even if you go across the country. Because that rabbinical court will say, well... Don't you have a rabbinical court in, you know, where you live? So you'll say, yeah. Say, but my rabbi said I, I shouldn't go there. You know, I say, okay, can we speak to the rabbis in the community? They'll say, yes. So if the rabbis in the community say, yeah, this is a rabbinical court, is this, that, and the other thing, so then that rabbinical court should work with you. Again, you know, it, it depends on them. You know, you have to show your serious. You have to show integrity. You have to show humility. That's what the basin wants to see. And the basin says, well, we're not going to convert you for six months, for a year, you know, for two years. You know, you have to say, okay. You know, if that's what the basin tells us, then we'll do, you know, we'll do whatever it takes. Now, again, you should always be in contact while you're in the basin process. You should always be in contact with your sponsoring rabbi and the rabbi is teaching you to let them know what's going on so they can... You know, so they, you know, they can guide you. You definitely don't want to look over eager because then they're going to, they, they might think you have some sort of agenda. You know, why do you want to convert so fast? You know, etc. So just keep in mind, they're going to take their sweet time and they have every right to do so. And they have, you know, they have absolutely every right, you know, not to do anything with you. If they feel there's something out of line, if they feel that you're not fit, whatever the case is, you know, they call the shots. So, if a person shows that they think they know better, you know, or they think they are better, I can, all, I can promise you, you know, if it comes to social media, do not spread anything about them. Not a good idea. Do what they have to say. You know, do what you have to do. Do what they say and show humility. Right? Extremely important. Important. So that's the based in process. Again, so, you know, some places may be more, some places may be less. But again, no basin is going to convert you, you know, in less than a year. Not going to happen, even if you live in the community, unless it's under certain circumstances. Unless you show you have the requisite knowledge and you've been somewhere else for a long time, you know, living in a community. You're coming out from scratch. You move into the community, you could have been learning for some of two, three years. They'll take, certainly take that into account. They'll see your knowledge base, but they want you to live in a community. And, you know, once based in converts you, they'll probably want you to stay in the community at least a year. Um, you know, follow up and, you know, make sure that you're, 
you know, you're doing what you need to do, and you just didn't get your piece of paper, and now you're going to take off, right? That's also um, also important um, as well. Um, another important thing um, is proper Jewish resources. There are a lot of resources online. Um, again, you know, if you're learning with someone, that's good, but there are also, you know, plenty of other classes and good information that you can get. Um, H.com. Is, uh, is is very good. Chabad.org um, also has a lot of good information. And if you're looking for um, MP3s, you know, to listen to on a variety of Torah subjects, you can uh, you can go to TorahAnytime.com. Um, T-O-R-A-H. Uh, I don't know how you spell it actually. I think it's A-H. You know, anytime. A-N-Y-T-I-M-E dot com. You can just Google it, or Sameach, I don't remember what, uh, I think it's O-H-R dot E-D-U, right, if you, if you, um, if you Google Yeshivat or Sameach, they also have a lot of good information, um, they also have a lot of good information um, as well, so those are good uh, resources, also you can go to um, artscroll.com or feldheim.com, right, A-R-T-S-C-R-O-L-L dot com, or Feldheim, F-E-L-D-H-E-I-M dot com. They are they have books, plenty of books, prayer books, uh, books on Jewish law, um, uh, books on the Torah, commentaries, English, Hebrew. Uh, you got to be, you know, they have Judaica. Um, I don't know if they have Judaica. Actually, they have books. The mostly thing is is books there. Um, so you know, keep in mind, you go on this site. And, you know, keep your credit card in your pocket because they have a lot of books. And they have a lot of very, very good books. Um, you can contact, you know, whoever you learn with or the rabbi of your synagogue. Ask them, you know, you know which books they recommend and what is good, etc. But, you know, the books on those two sites, you're not going to go wrong. Uh, you might uh, take a chunk out of your pocket, but um, you're certainly not going to go wrong. So those are some of the... Uh, um, those are some of the Jewish resources uh, that are good uh, as well. So anyone who's uh, interested in my program, you can take a look at my Facebook fan page, Beyond Orthodox Conversion, uh, at uh, on on Facebook. I also have a blog. It's orthodoxconversion.com. Uh, dot com, and um, and I also. Uh, I give these classes uh, online, so you can check out uh, you can check out that. You can also check out uh, my videos. I have a uh, YouTube page or YouTube channel, sorry, at Rabbi Chaim Kaufman, right? R a b b i c h a i m c o f f m a n, because that's how my father spelled it, right? If you do a Google search, Rabbi Chaim Kaufman, uh, you'll see videos there on the parsha. Also. I've been on video on Tanakh Talk, T-E-N-A-K-T-A-L-K. If you do a YouTube search for Tanakh Talk with my name, Rabbi Chaim Kaufman, you'll find videos I made for them on my work with Converse. I also work with Noahides. Um, I also work with Noahides as well. Anyone interested not in conversion, but they're interested in being a Noahide, so I could definitely help you um, in the process uh, as well, and anyone who wants to contact me personally, you can uh, contact me at Rabbi Chaim Kaufman at gmail.com. R A B B I C H A I M C O F F M A N at gmail.com.